homeostasis is one of those things that's always really confounding to students. So the word parts, homo, homeo means same, stay, stay means stay, and cis is process. So the word homeostasis literally means the process of staying the same. Um, and it's very important that animals are able to maintain their internal environments regardless of what their external environment does. So here we have a human and our internal temperature, our internal environment temperature, the healthy human temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. It's something else Celsius, but you know, Fahrenheit because we're in America. So um, if you get above 99, then they say that you have a fever. And the farther above 99, then the worse off that you are. So the first thing that you typically will do when you start to have a body temperature above what it should be is you're going to start sweating. And sweating, as a lot of people think, ooh, it's gross, it's nasty, you don't want to sweat, blah, blah, blah. Um, sweating is your body's way of cooling itself off because when that sweat evaporates, it takes the heat energy with it and cools your body. Sweating doesn't actually help you if you wipe your sweat off. You have to let it evaporate. So if you're overheating and sweating, your better bet is just go stand in front of a fan so that fan can help that sweat evaporate and it will help cool your body. Now, if you get below 98 degrees Fahrenheit, also not a good thing. The first thing that happens is that you start getting goosebumps. Goosebumps go back to the day when we were really furry um, because all of the hair on our body would stand up and trap the heat in between all of that hair and help to create this warm um, layer of air around our body. If goosebumps doesn't work enough, you usually start shivering. And shivering takes the energy that's stored in your muscles and starts turning that into heat energy with those little twitchy things that your muscles do. And it's your body trying to return to its normal um, temperature, its normal internal state. Now, if you remain in an environment with an extremely high or extremely low temperature, over time, then those mechanisms don't work anymore. And then if you're in an extremely hot temperature, you're going to have heat stroke. If you're really cold temperature, you're going to have hypothermia. But your body does a pretty good job for a short period of time keeping you from dying. Let's take a bird, for example. Birds don't do this, do they? Well, of course they do, because that's why it's an example here. So our friends, the birds, when they get too hot, they don't really sweat. They don't have sweat glands um, like we do. But when birds get hot, they pant, just like a dog. So they open their mouth, and they stick their tongue out, and they start breathing very heavily. <laughs> and in doing that, they push air over the tongue and over the surface of their mouth, which is moist. And it helps, again, to have that water evaporate. And when the water evaporates, it takes heat with it. Now, as you can imagine, when we sweat or when animals pant, you start losing water from your body and getting dehydrated. That's why it's important that you drink when it's hot outside and when you're sweating, and for birds and animals too. If your dog's panting, it probably could use some water because it's losing heat or it's losing water as it's taking heat out of its body. Now, when it gets cold, um, birds do just like we do. Birds get goosebumps. And when they do, their feathers fluff up and they get really big and puffy looking because they're trying to trap all of that heat energy around their body inside of their feathers and in those air pockets to warm themselves up. They'll also shiver when they get super duper cold. Um, and again, that mechanism will work if they're cold for a short period of time to help to um, keep their body temperature where it's supposed to so that they don't get sick. So most animals, most of our warm-blooded animals are going to do those things. Now, salmon are born in streams. And streams are freshwater, therefore they have very low salt content. The salmon then take off down that stream and they cruise into the ocean. There's terrible ocean waves. I'll redraw those there. Ocean. And um, the spend, you know, most of their mature adult life in the ocean. Now, the ocean, because it's the ocean, has a really high salt concentration. And salmon are one of the few creatures that can do this salt to fresh water scenario because the cells of their bodies... Um, are able to deal with the change in salt concentration. So the um, salmon then at the end of their life swim back up the stream years later um, so that they can mate and they return to their birth stream to reproduce. And then sadly, poor little salmon die 
after they reproduce. It's a really sad story. Salmon never get to meet their parents. It's really unfortunate. They leave their eggs in the stream. They start the cycle all over again. Um, but their homeostasis is that they can adjust the salt content in their cells, unlike most other animals, so that they don't die when um, they go in and out of salt water and fresh water, whereas other animals would shrivel up and die or just completely explode. So homeostasis is a very important um, thing for animals to be able to survive. And any time an organism can do something to maintain its internal environment, regardless of what's going on in the external environment, as the external environment will change, that is considered homeostasis. We are staying the same inside of our bodies. So there are your examples. I hope this makes a little bit more sense for you now.